All right, how's it going out there, folks? Rooster here in Tennessee with another uh, oddball amplifier here. And I can almost guarantee you that no one has seen this one before or one exactly like this one. Um, obviously, looking at the cabinet appears to be what was at one time an Elkin. Elkins, a lot of people call them. But uh, Elkin amp, popular sweep tube amp. I believe that's what this was originally. But uh, this is a custom made creation from a red bone down in Georgia. Very popular uh, technician out of Georgia, does a lot of tube amp repairs, does some custom tube amp builds, radio repairs. Um, he's been in it for a long time. I've never had the pleasure to meet him myself, uh, but a friend of mine that I do a lot of business with is uh, quite the frequent customer down there. And he always comes back with some pretty interesting stuff. And uh, this one is no exception to that. It's one that Redbone built, kind of custom built. Um, and it's kind of a cool concept. I mean, uh, I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. You got two tuners on the front, one on the side. And a lot of what I'm gonna say about this amp is gonna be, you know, best guess or speculation because I don't have the details on it. But if you look through the front here, you can see your metal tube, steel tube, ceramic tube, whatever you wanna call it. Which to me, with that heat sink that you can see there, the cooler, appears to be a GI-46B. Now I know that's a common tube that he's used in the past, Russian tube. It's in that family of tubes if it's not a GI-46. I would say it's either a GI-46 or a GI-7, something like that, but I believe it's a GI-46B. And especially with the output that we're seeing, that's my best guess. I don't know what the sweep tube is that's in here. Assuming that it was something left over from the original Elkin amp that it was, but it is set up to drive a steel tube, making this a low drive amp. Because if, if that is, a, in fact, a, a GI-46, that's a kind of a medium drive tube that, that takes a little bit of drive to make it get up and go. So um, the way the amp's set up now, 35 to 40 watts PEP is all you need going into it. Assuming these tuners in the front are to tune the steel tube, your final tube, and this one on the side to tune your driver tube. Um, I have tuned all three for maximum PEP output. Just a quick hello, tune them for max output. And uh, seems to be doing pretty well. Standby switch here. This switch is three position. Up is on high and the middle is off and on the bottom is low. He did put a blower on it back here. I will tell you guys, the coax connector is kind of in an aggravating spot. You just about have to turn the amp up on its side to get that connector in it. That one goes to your antenna, the one on the left. The one on the right goes to your radio. Um, so you have that. But the blower's pretty quiet, especially to be one on the outside. A lot of times they make a lot of racket when they're mounted on the outside, but it is what it is. I mean, homemade box, Redbone made it. It seems to be doing a good job. It is up for sale and it will be local pickup only. So that being said, let's get on with the show here and uh, see exactly what this guy is capable of. We're gonna be driving it with our ever so popular Uniden 66. And we'll start out on average. We've got a thousand watt slug in here. If I can get the camera straightened up, see if you guys can see that. There you go, thousand watt slug. So we're gonna be putting about 10 watts average in this is average power first. Hello, are you? Hello, are you? About 250, 275. Average. Now, if we tuned it for average, it would probably come on up. Let's back that out a little bit. And let's go to PEP. The shakiness of the camera is like exaggerated when you zoom in, so it's like it's shaking all over the place. Uh, PEP, audio bottom scale, audio one, two, three, audio one, two, three, about 775, uh, close to 800 watts PEP. And it's holding good, no noises, no kind of nothing, you know, audio. I don't, I'm not scared to stay on this thing all day long. So don't be deceived by how kind of ugly the thing is because uh, it's actually kind of badass little uh, amp here. I tell you guys, I had a lot of people inquire about that John Boy that I had that I tested last week for a customer. If I had my pick between this 
and that 250B John Boy, even if that John Boy had a, a, a solid 250B in it, a strong one, I'd really have this amp. Um, like I said, not the most beautiful on the outside, but I believe it's built to last. And, uh, you know, something he did some pretty nice work on here. Nothing against John Boy. I like John well. Done a lot of business with him. Met him, you know, a dozen times and, uh, you know, like him a lot. But if I had my pick between this amp and that single 250B John Boy, because they're both kind of low drive amps, I like this one better myself. Kind of a cool concept too. A little unique. A little sweep tube driver in there, driving a steel tube. Something you don't see every day. So, <clears throat> has a nice heavy duty, long power cord on it. There's the, uh, reach back here. There's the power cord right there. So nice heavy duty power cord. Let me know if you guys are interested. This one will be listed up for local pickup. Cash only. All right, guys. Redbone built. Again, I believe it's a single GI 46. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But uh, all indicators look like that's what it is. Appreciate everybody. Rooster in Tennessee. RoosterCB.com. See you. Bye.